What's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about topologies, network diagramming, and a free web app called draw.io. So topologies, as we mentioned in an earlier video, are layouts of the network. And there's really two types of topologies. There's physical topologies and there's logical topologies. Physical topologies typically are focused on how the devices are connected, right? And, and where they are located within a building. Logical topologies show things like how the traffic is flowing through the network and how addressing is assigned across devices on the network. Now, you may even see interfaces identified in there or ports. Ports being the, the hole on the device that allows people to connect into it. Like, you know, a switch has 24 ports. The most popular topology you're going to come across in networking is the star topology. A star topology means there is one central connecting device for all of the other devices in the network. Meaning, all the devices have a connection to the switch, as you can see there in, in my diagram is the my PCs have a in the laptop and the server and the router they all connect together th through the switch so the signal travels up the line into the switch and then the switch has some intelligence built in that we'll talk about in a in a future video that uh, then that intelligence it learns about an identifier on on one of those devices and it retransmits the signal or forwards the signal or the frame to the destination. Now, the, the, the benefits of a star are redundancy um, and, and, and not necessarily for this device because let's say this PC right here had a cable failure of some kind. Um, then it's not going to be able to connect, but that won't sever the connection for the entire network, right? They'll still be able to communicate and get out to the router, right? So that's a benefit of the star. One thing that could be a downside, of course, it's hard to build redundancy in, meaning, you know, failover and backup connections uh, at this level because, um, you know, that means you got to have multiple connections coming from the PC or the, the, the end device, the client device, and, and that's hard to do. So if the switch fails, of course, you know, we got to get a new switch in there because now no one has a connection. The central hub has failed. Um, there's, a, there's a topology that has a solution for this kind of central point of failure idea, and that is the, the mesh topology. So I'll show you the mesh topology. Go ahead and open up a web browser, uh, whatever your favorite web browser is, and go to draw.io. So draw.io is a web app that's a diagramming tool. I use it for network diagrams and uh, to, to create visuals for some of my lessons because I just like the way it looks. You know, you might, you might wonder, um, well, can't Packet Tracer do this? To a certain extent, I could use gra uh, Packet Tracer solely as a visual aid, but I, I really like the icons, the animations, and just the overall way that draw.io works and, and, and looks. So um, as we were mentioning with the topologies, if you look down towards the bottom here, you'll notice that I have a mesh topology. And we talked about how with the star topology, that middle is, is it could fail. If this fails, then no one connects, and that's true. So now, what do you do about that? What, is there a topology out there that can actually you know, help you in that situation? Yes, that's called a mesh topology. But I will say it's a lot less common than the star, and it is uh, not as practical for physical connections, meaning you know, the star, you'll mostly see cables connected to, the, to a switch. But in a mesh, what the topology essentially is, is every single device in the network has at least one other connection, or at least one connection to every other device. That's a key factor when we're talking about a mesh. So think about the practicality. In the real world, what would make the most sense 
in a mesh network, physical connection wise? I'll, I'll give you some time to think about that. So if you had some time to think about that, maybe you paused the video and you, and you came up with an answer, um, hopefully you arrived at wireless networks would make a lot of sense for a mesh network. Because if, if you think about how would this work in a physical network, you would have to have at least one physical cable connecting from your computer to every other. And that's, that's not very mobile and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But with wireless, we have that capability because our computers have antennas that connect to each other, right? So mesh, you'll see mainly with wireless. And there's a lot of home mesh systems you can look up out there. Ubiquity makes some, um, Eero, Netgear, uh, you name it. There's, if they're a network, uh, a network vendor, they probably make a mesh solution. However, again, not as popular. So those are the really the two main topologies we're going to talk about in the beginning of this course. I'll introduce more topologies as we get deeper in into the 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 uh, juiciness of the lessons in this course. But for now, um, I'll see you in the next video.